Hello everyone, this is Caleb Simpson, and you are watching my 100% walkthrough for The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword for Nintendo Wii. In the last video, we explored the Elden Province and finally made our way through the Volcano Summit area. Now at the end of that, that leads to the Fire Sanctuary, which is the next dungeon in the game. However, in order to enter the dungeon, we need a large quantity of water in order to satisfy the thirst of the giant frog statue thing that is above the entrance. So where do we know where we can find a large container of water? Now the... the zone that has a lot of water is going to be the Faron region in general. So you want to warp down to the Lake Floria, or the Floria Waterfall more specifically. Floria Waterfall, and this is right next to the entrance to the Ancient Cistern. If you remember from earlier, there was actually that basin of water that Faron was um, healing in when she got damaged from Girahim earlier in the game. So we're going to ask her if we can borrow the basin to open the entrance to the Fire Sanctuary. <laughs> So throughout the game, I've been using glittering spores to create fairies whenever I want. Um, and this is very useful, especially if you have more than one bottle. So if you have two on your person, or at least, or even three, then that makes it really awesome. I think at this point we actually have about five bottles, I think. Or maybe it's just four at this point. I don't know, we're gonna have five here soon. I think there's five total in the game. Uh, but anyways, so bottles are really awesome. It's definitely the best healing. You can get life potions or uh, life metals as well, but I don't think they're super as worthwhile. A bottle is significantly superior to a single life metal. Uh, but anyways, you can go ahead and use glittering spores, which is the shimmering variety. If you go find a glittering mushroom, you can scoop up the spores for that, and you can then dump the glittering spores on heart flowers or regular hearts that drop off enemies in order to create fairies. Now fairies will heal you for seven hearts and you can just make them whatever you want because heart flowers are everywhere. Or at least in the regular game, they're not really in hero mode unless you have a heart metal on you. Uh, but anyways, it is a very nice option for healing and it is free. We're starting to get to the point though where we have a lot of health so fairies are not as worthwhile. So if a lot of you watching right now, it might be more worthwhile to go ahead and get heart potions and upgrade them at uh, Birdie's station right next to Love's Potion Shop in the bazaar. Um, but I'm not doing that right now in part because I still have glittering spores on me, so I'm just using them up and I might as well. I'm also not too worried about it because I've played this game a lot, so I'm not really going to be using any healing items except to, like, empty my bottles. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, if you have the capability of doing so, it might be more worthwhile to get heart potions if you have the bugs to support it, to upgrade it in particular. Uh, I think the regular rank 1 heart potions don't heal very much, but once you upgrade them once, they, they heal you completely. Upgrade them a second time, and you can actually use the potion twice, and it will heal all of your hearts. I'm starting to have enough hearts where it's almost more worthwhile to use that type of potion instead. Something that I've observed just through talking with other fans and watching other people play is I don't really think that most players, like, really um, adequately appreciate the strength of bottles. Like, bottles are really, really powerful. Um, I'm not using them because I'm trying to show, like, you know, the hard way, so to speak, to play this game, or like more of a minimalist uh, effect, even though I am gathering everything, I haven't been showing me using any potions for buffs to make me more effective. And I also haven't really been using any like more powerful recovery items. So the most powerful one in the game is definitely that heart potion plus plus. It heals you completely, you can use it twice. And I think because there's, I believe, five bottles in the game, that means you can have five heart potion plus pluses, which means you can heal yourself completely from, from empty 10 times which is insane if you think about it. Like, okay, so if you have, say, 16 hearts, that means that you can heal it and you can have up to, like, 160, well, it's, you know, 160 plus 16, so whatever, you know what I mean? So, but it, it was, you're obviously going to heal before you're empty, of course. You have to heal when you have low health, so it's not really quite that extreme. But say that means you can, for example, get hit 150 times. 
which is insane. So if you are willing to spend the rupees, and in particular the bugs, that it requires to support that type of playstyle, you could just run forward with your sword, and you could have, like, a lot of healing, an insane amount of healing. If you're willing to give up having a quiver in your inventory, in your adventure pouch, you can instead replace that with bottles, and it is very, very powerful, just as far as a healing perspective. But even some of the other potions, the stamina potions and the uh, guardian potions in particular, are kind of, kind of gross, like how powerful they are if you really utilize them well in different areas of the game. But just something to be aware of, like potion, ugh. bottles are very, very powerful. That's what I'm trying to say. I think part of the reason why that is such a pronounced difference for this game versus other Zelda games, like bottles are good in every Zelda game, but in this game, um, it's not just a flat upgrade because you can swap it with other things. So I'm just saying that bottles compared to other items you could potentially have in your adventure pouch slot, bottles are definitely more powerful is what I'm trying to say. I just am saying that I think generally speaking people underestimate the power level of bottles versus other items you could possibly possess. All right, I'll come back to that subject in a little bit because I do actually have more to say about that. So we returned to Elden, and unfortunately we went to the bottom part of Elden Volcano, and this is we have to work our way all the way back up to Volcano Summit uh, just by walking, which is really unfortunate. Now you can just shoot all of these enemies with the bow, and once again, using the C button to charge it is much better than using charging it with A. It's just significantly faster, so I would encourage you to use that button because it helps a lot. You just hold down the C button on your your uh, nunchuck controller and then shake the controller, the nunchuck that is to make a charge instantly. Now, as you're moving with Scrapper here, you do need to make sure you don't move too quickly, otherwise Scrapper could get left behind, and you'll have to go back and touch him again to make him come after you, I believe is how that works. Um, anyways, do know that the enemies will actually attack Scrapper if they get too close to him, so you do kind of want to keep the enemies at a distance, and there is some uh, bird statues along the way that you can save at in case you fail or whatever. You can go back to that save file, and uh, that might save you time rather than having to come start all the way from the beginning. There's a lot of Bokoblin archers in this area, and you can defeat them to get arrows as well, but also in case they shoot at you and you dodge back and forth to avoid their arrows, you can pick up the arrow that just got smacked into the ground to get a single one. Anyways, point being, there are tons of arrows around. You can get them from the Bokoblin archers, from the arrows they shoot, and also from soft soil locations all over this area, so don't worry about it. Just spam arrows like crazy on everything. Now at this little intersection, there is a rock wall that is blocking our path. Now I actually blew it up earlier in the game to create a shortcut by using some of the bomb flowers on the other side. Now that we have bombs though, you can just blow it up yourself. I'm actually not sure if it will already be blown up regardless of whether or not you unlocked it. Um, the reason I say that is because I know like, say for example, the Skyview Temple, there's a shortcut at the very beginning where you break some like wooden crate things that uh, create a shortcut at the very beginning of the temple. But if you return to Skyview Temple and you haven't broken that, it's already broken for you. They create the shortcut for you, um, even though you didn't unlock it. So I'm not sure if, like in this example, even though it's in the overworld, or it's like out in the world itself, I don't know if this shortcut particular one is already created for you. So you might not have to blow it up, even if you didn't do that earlier. Now up ahead, we have some dark keys. Now, if these guys do smack you, you'll be unable to use your sword for a little bit, so they could attack Scrapper. And rather than panicking about that, just use the whip in particular is what I'd recommend, or the slingshot, honestly. If you have the uh, scatter shot upgrade, you can defeat them very easily that way as well with a charge shot with that. Up ahead, we have the first sand slide. There's a couple of these Bokoblin archers here, but there's also a couple more off to the left. So get up to this first platform, and while you're waiting for the stamina to recharge, be sure to defeat these two Bokoblin archers before they start attacking Scrapper. All right, let's continue the awesome discussion about bottles. <laughs> because uh, once again, I think that people underestimate how powerful bottles can be. And in particular, this uh, combination of glittering spores is actually very, very powerful. Uh, I think it's even more powerful in hero mode. And uh, let me explain how that works real quick. In hero mode, you do not get recovery hearts from enemies or out in the world, like there are no heart flowers anywhere in hero mode. And enemies do not drop recovery hearts at all. Uh, but one thing you can do is you can wear a heart medal. What heart medals do is they make enemies more likely to drop recovery hearts, so they drop them more often. And there's actually two heart medals in the game, so the more heart medals you are currently carrying in your adventure pouch, then the more often you will see heart recovery hearts appear. Now that's all well and good, but something that's actually even more powerful that I think a lot of people haven't considered is that you, what you can do is you can wear a single heart medal on you in hero mode, and then have a single bottle and go to Farron and fill it up with glittering spores. Now what that means is that you can, whenever enemies do drop a recovery heart, you can stop whatever you're doing and go turn it into a fairy, which is very powerful in hero mode when there is no healing in general. So not only are you getting a heart, you're getting seven hearts per each recovery heart that drops, as long as you have a uh, bottle of glittering spores on you. Now that doesn't mean you're collecting the fairies, you're just using them for healing, but it's just a very, very powerful or very potent combination. Um, in hero mode. Like in regular mode, it's like, okay, it's it's still cool, it's awesome, but in hero mode, it's very, very powerful uh, because 
you don't have a lot of healing in general, so you're just you're just accentuating that healing a lot by having that combination. So for two slots in your adventure pouch, you're having a lot of healing. Of course, it is worth pointing out that that is only really worthwhile for just walking around in general, but for, for dungeons and stuff, it's okay. But for the bosses in particular, that's not really the greatest thing. It's definitely more superior to have, like, just multiple bottles filled up with heart potion. It would definitely be better. So I haven't really been talking about what's happening on screen, but it's basically just use arrows. That's all you really need to know. Just keep shooting stuff and you'll be fine. There's just so many arrows that enemies drop, uh, both from enemies as well as soft soil locations. It's not a big deal. There's a couple points in this whole scrapper escort that are pretty awkward, and this is one of them on this second sand hill. Um, in particular, I think right here is kind of the scariest part because uh, if you get knocked down, then that particular vocal balloon is up on this first platform can keep shooting at you or keep, keep smacking Scrapper, and if he gets smacked, I think, four times in a row, then he'll run away, and that's bad. Um, so it is a little bit awkward, you just kind of keep dodging back and forth so that you avoid the arrows. Uh, but a couple things you can do, like here I think I just kept smacking him until he fell off backwards, but even if you are, even if they're defending, the vocal bones can be knocked backwards, because uh, you knock them back a little bit each time you hit them. So if all else fails and you're like struggling to get past his defenses, you can just keep smacking left and right, and eventually you'll just push it off the ledge and it's fine. I think I'm just gonna fast forward through a lot of this. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'm just steadily working my way through here. A couple things I'm doing is I'm like walking back and forth to grab arrows from these Bokoblin archers. And uh, up ahead, I actually have this kind of scary interaction with a moblin where uh, I was trying to stun it with the slingshot, but it's wearing a helmet, so this made it a little bit awkward uh, because it's resistant. It, you can't get a headshot on it sometimes at the right angle. Hit hit the head too high. Uh, usually the scatter shot makes that pretty easily easy though, so you don't have to worry about it too much. But yeah, just be careful, um, and I would recommend, honestly, just using the bow for the entire thing. Uh, the reason I was using the scatter shot instead was just to vary it up a little bit. I don't really have much to say about the next little bit, we're just repeating some of the same tactics and working our way further north. Just remember that you can't use any of the geysers because Scrapper won't do that, you have to just walk up there manually. And remember, you can, yet, you can use your map to navigate through this whole area to try and figure out where to go, because we've been using the geysers a lot, honestly, the last little while that we've been here um, in Elden. Uh, but anyways, you have to work your way all the way back to the Volcano Summit, and if you run out of arrows along the way, just remember that you can dig up a lot of the nearby soft soil locations, and those will give you arrows as well. So don't worry about it too much, just feel free to use a lot of arrows. So once you finally reach Volcano Summit, just be warned that there is a bunch of clusters of keys, and so they can actually defeat Scrapper in a very short period of time if they all decide to attack him. So we'd recommend that you use attacks that can attack multiple keys at once. So in particular, the best item for that is the Scatter Shot. So if you have upgraded that, you can charge it up. This is a good place to use it. Um, the next best option is might be the um, the Skyward Strike, actually, because you can use like a horizontal Skyward Strike and just a side slash, and that will uh, attack multiple ones at a time. That's pretty good. The next best item definitely by far is going to be the whip. Um, I think a lot of people just dis discount the whip as being able to attack weaker enemies, but it is very effective and it works very quickly. But yeah, as long as you're close enough where you can Z-target an enemy, then you can whip them. So if you are, the whip has a little bit greater range than just a regular sword attack, so it is definitely really nice for keys because you can just be like, tch, 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 and you can take out a whole bunch of them really quickly. Um, you don't have to like worry about them getting too low because the problem is they might attack Scrapper and they're like too high above your head. So you have to switch to a ranged weapon. And so the whip just makes it guaranteed you can take care of them in a very short period of time and you don't even have to worry about it too much. Now up ahead, I definitely recommend you take out the Cursed Spume on, off to the left before you hop down. You can throw down a... Unfortunately, these guys are immune to the bow, but you can throw down a bomb to distract them a little bit. Um, I do think this is a little bit risky because the explosion can smack Scrapper. Well, ideally, what you do is you stay pretty close to this ledge because what happens is Scrapper will stay on the ledge above, so he's not going to get defeated that way. Um, so as long as you stay pretty close to this ledge and you don't go too far off to either side, then they can't actually attack him. So that is a really big tip in my opinion, but yeah, so just steadily work your way defeating each one of these Lizalfos, and ideally what you do is you wait until they start defending, and then you can go ahead and flip them over, usually with just an upward slash. And that's pretty much it. After you defeated them, then the rest of the path towards Fire Sanctuary is totally clear. So just work your way over there, and then speak with Gorko there outside the entrance to Fire Sanctuary, and this will allow Scrapper to go ahead and dump the water on top of the frog statue thing, which will open the way towards Fire Sanctuary. So thank you for guys for joining me. Join me for the next video where we will tackle Fire Sanctuary. But yeah, as always, if you enjoyed this, be sure to throw a like on this video because it really does help a lot. And uh, be sure to subscribe because I post things throughout the week and both for Zelda and other games. And I also stream throughout the week on Twitch as well. But yeah, follow me on Thingies because I do stuff for you to enjoy.
southwest of Solari Hill. Manyatoma. Oh, sorry, you're right. Southeast. You're right. My sense of direction is flawless. Don't don't mind me. 